Hello everyone, this is Don with Red Path Consulting Group and today we're going to be reviewing uh, the very basics of demand tools uh, which is uh, powered by CRM Fusion. It does a lot of data cleanup and data merging. So if you have a database that is replete with duplicates, this is a good tool to dedupe and, and merge um, a litany of um, data records across objects, custom and standard in a pretty quick and efficient manner. There's a lot of nuance and features to demand tools, but today, just to start, we're gonna be focusing on the very basics within the cleansing tools, specific to single table dedupe. So here I've already logged into an account that we'll use as an example and look at how single table dedupe works as far as writing scenarios, changing criteria, and actually reviewing the possible duplicates that exist within a, uh, an object and set of records. So to get started, the cleansing tools, we'll just go to this cleansing tools menu and select single table dedupe. And again, I've already logged in under an account that we've been granted permission to use. So we'll go ahead and get started through this step-by-step -step process. And one thing that I'll make note of for everybody out here, Demand Tools is actually PC-based. So if you're working on a Mac, this would not be available to you. That's one of the pros, or the cons rather, of Demand Tools. But it's a pretty quick and efficient and easy to use process. Um, even if it looks daunting at first when we log in to single table dedupe, the nice features that Demand Tools has is they have a step-by-step -step process to just kind of guide you and give you some insight as to what each step does and what you need to do to be successful in creating a scenario, reviewing the fields that you've that you've identified that you want to be visible on map on actually the, the action grid, um, which is what we'll see later on, and what you can do to make the process a little more efficient for yourself. So for the example that I want to use today, we're going to look at writing a scenario or looking at a prepackaged scenario, rather, of duplicates within an account object. So we'll see to the left-hand side of the screen here we have a bunch of different objects that are prepackaged, and then some custom objects that I've tooled around with in the past. So anything that you've recently worked on above and beyond the standard objects in Salesforce would show for you um, if you've activated them and have actively run scenarios on those objects. But to be simple here, we're going to start with the account object in Salesforce and click on that little plus symbol there brings us to a set of scenarios. Some are prepackaged, some are scenarios that I've actually written and modified from prepackaged scenarios. And a good rule of thumb as it relates to demand tools and, and reviewing duplicate scenarios is to start at a very rigid criteria for your first pass. Look at the results within duplicates that exist at rigid criteria first pass cleanse as needed, and then loosen up the criteria to more fuzzy logic as you expand out in your analysis of that particular object. Now, um, this particular org has gone through quite a bit of data cleanup and merging, so we're not going to get any real results if we run this rigid criteria, but I do mention the best practice as it relates to a first pass for scenarios is to start at a rigid criteria and work your way out to more fuzzy logic from there. But being that the case that this org has already gone through an extensive amount of data cleanup, we're going to look at the loose criteria on accounts for billing. So selecting that particular scenario gives you an overview populated, just letting you know what the criteria is for this particular scenario. And then the next panel to the right allows us to select particular fields to show for potential duplicates. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and load this scenario, which will prepackage some of the fields for us. And now that we've loaded that scenario, you can see to the far right panel, um, we've got some prepackaged fields that will show on uh, potential duplicate results. Um, we can customize this here, just to the left of that set of fields that are going to be visible. We have every field that is available for this particular object. And you can see that that actually digs into related objects as well. So if we wanted to look at NPSP fields, we could do that maybe for opportunities. And a good one to add is the total amount of gifts. And just clicking on that particular field, the checkbox to the left of that field, you can see adds that field to our set of fields that will show in our results. If you need to deselect a field and remove it, it's as simple as unchecking that box. So we can remove fields as needed. So maybe we don't want owner name to show in our results. 
That's as easy as highlighting that particular row and hitting delete on your keyboard. And one thing that I always like to do, there's a lot of fields in this particular object, so it can be a little daunting to find what you're looking for, but I always like to include the account ID. And that is the Salesforce generated 18 digit account ID that is unique to every account record in Salesforce. And one other thing that we can do is we can move the placement of the fields around. So if you'd like to have the account ID listed first, followed by the account name, billing information, phone, and total donations made or opportunities if you're in a for-profit org, um, that can easily be accomplished. And another thing that I like to do when we're in a nonprofit org is to look at the particular record type name. So again, a related list to the account object is the record type information and we'll just select name from record type drop down. So that's going to show us whether it's a organizational record in the account object or a household account. So that's selection part two to show the fields in our results once the scenario is run. And then the we already loaded the scenario so that's step three. You can see all of the information by just scrolling your mouse over that particular step, the, nu the numeric representation of that step. And now we'll look at four. You do have the option to run conditions based on your criteria. So if you maybe wanted to, let's say, only look at potential duplicates at the household account level, uh, we would select use conditions and add that particular condition to our criteria by finding record type. This is the same as we did when we found the actual record type name to include in our list of results. And here we'll say name equals, in this case, household account. Add that condition. But in this particular scenario, I'm not going to use that condition. Um, we've added that condition, so if we ever want to go back and be very granular and nuanced in how we analyze potential results on a household account level rather than both organization and household account, that would be there for us to use. But in this case, I'm going to select that use all for conditions. And now we'll go to the next step in our process, step two, which is actually mapping the criteria fields, the scenario fields that we'll use. And this is prepackaged in the loose criteria setting. So what this does here is shows us the account name, and the mapping type. This is a cleaned account name based on fuzzy logic and alpha clean criteria. We've got the billing street, which is a relaxed address match. So we don't need to do anything there as far as changing that to fuzzy or alpha clean. That's more of a fuzzy, relaxed street address match. And then city is listed as exact for its matching type, but in this particular scenario, in its prepackaged version, we've overridden that and selected fuzzy. So in situations where you might have St. Paul spelled S-T period P-A-U-L and S-A-I-N-T P-A-U-L, those will both match and show a potential duplicate for us. So we're looking at the scenario, the criteria that we've set for this scenario, which is account name based on fuzzy logic, relaxed address match for the street, and a fuzzy criteria for billing city. So once that all looks good, we can go ahead and go to step three, which is merge control. So this is actually going to show us the potential results of duplicates, not actually conduct a merge for us. This allows us to review all of the results that show potential for duplicates based on the criteria that we've set usually takes a little time depending on the size of the data in your org to go through everything and properly process the criteria that you've set. But once we've accomplished that and run that, we can see the results that are listed here. All of the fields that we selected way back in step one are represented, account ID, account name, all the way through the record type. So this is a pretty slick review process. You can go through and just manually, visually look at all the potential dupes that have been identified by the criteria that we set and generated. Not a lot in this particular case. You can see a representation of the roll-ups here, 36 account records and 18 groups, so all groups of two, spread across between organization and household accounts. 
So I'll talk a little bit about the items off this review grid here. These areas here allow us to define a master rule. And what that means is it's a rule that would be abided by when we go to merge records and it would generate or retain a master record based on the criteria that we set here and, and actually list. So if we wanted to say that all master records will look to the newest record, we would go ahead and select that rule. These are prepackaged and, and out of the box rules. Um, if you like, you can write your own new rule based on whatever criteria you would like to implement for automatically retaining master records or identifying rather master records that would be retained on a merge process. Step nine is actually using the Salesforce merge. I would always recommend not changing that. Um, the Salesforce merge process is going to take data elements from the duplicate record and merge them into your master record, the record that you retain. And then step 10 is just some merge options. What you'd like to do after a record is deleted, you do have the ability to define how certain fields are stored, named, whether they're deleted or set for being flagged for deletion. I always recommend if you're solid in the review process here, fairly confident in the actual duplicative results that you've identified, to just actually let the Salesforce merge process take hold. Now getting back to the grid itself, the review grid on all of our potential duplicates that we've found, there's quite a few things that we can do. Um, you can review all of the results based on the fields that we've listed to be visible in our review process, but you can also drill in to the actual Salesforce record. A little difficult to see on the screen, but just to the left of the account ID, there's a magnifier, or a binocular button. If we click on that for that particular row, this will actually open in a web browser, the Salesforce record that is being identified as a potential duplicate. So in this case here, you can see everything contained within that record, all related lists, activities, donations, etc. if they did exist. And you can do the same for any of these records. So if you wanted to do a side-by-side -side review of all of the details of any particular set of records that are being flagged as potential duplicates based on the criteria that you've set. You can do that here. Now I'm going to go ahead and finalize a merge process based on just one set of records here. This particular household account for Frank Delasio, obviously a duplicate record, just a little bit different in the spelling convention of the last name. We can see that one record has $820 in opportunity donations while one is at zero. So a duplicate record was added, wasn't caught based on probably the differentiation, slight differentiation in the spelling of the last name. So what I'll do here is actually select the record that will retain as our master account and you can do that by double clicking on the magnifying glass just to the left of the binocular icon and in this case um, I think I'll go ahead and just retain the record that has the total amount of gifts of $820 in it as our master record so double clicking on that particular record gives a green light uh, which is a indication that that is the record that will be retained as the master record while the red light to the left of the other record just above that line item is the one that will be deleted and all of the other data elements that aren't represented or enriched the the master record will be merged into the master record that's retained and before we go through the merge process one final thing to review is the set of items just below the grid display we've got options to expand or collapse all. So in this case here, if we say collapse all, that's just going to give you a really high level re review of all of the duplicate records that have been found. And we can reverse that by selecting expand all. If you wanted to check all records and apply a master rule after going through all of these records, if they're all indeed duplicates, one click of the button will check all of those and prepare those for merge. Or if you get cold feet about that and want to uncheck them, you can do that here as well. The master rule, reply to all, or rather apply to all. Or if you wanted to just apply the rule to all that you've checked on a manual basis, you can do that here as well. If you wanted to add fields to the grid setup, you can do that. You don't have to go all the way back to the start. You can go ahead and click on this button here, which will allow you to add more fields to your review process on the grid. Or if you found you wanted to export the results of this scenario to Excel, you can do that here by clicking on Export Grid Data. That'll allow you the option of either exporting the results in a pre-formatted version that would look very similar to this in, in Excel, or just the raw data fields themselves. So there are two options there. 
and then the display of the grid, if we wanted just to show everything that we've checked, if we've gone through hundreds of records and we've made some selections, we can just show all that have checked. Or if we want to look at those that have not been selected or reviewed, we can opt to show those that are unchecked. And one last thing before we go ahead and, and conduct the merge on our checked records is the saving of a scenario. So demand tools on all of their scenarios for standard objects have prepackaged out-of-the-box scenarios. Um, and you can make alterations on those scenarios by adding in fields, changing the logic slightly if you, if you felt compelled to do so. I mean, a good rule of thumb there is if you do indeed make changes to any scenario, go ahead and, and save that scenario but rename it slightly and usually something that is easily identifiable as you, as you the system administrator to be able to go back and recreate that scenario. So if you have Maybe every quarter you go through an extensive data review looking for duplicates. If you have a scenario that's really fine-tuned and honed in on looking at potential duplicates in your org, that would be a good place to start by creating your own scenarios and just kind of expanding on the prepackaged out-of-the-box scenarios that Demand Tools supplies. So after reviewing all these items that are available for looking at potential duplicate results, we've selected, in this case, just one set of records, two records that we're going to dedupe and merge. They've been checked, selected, ready to go. We've got our master record identified. And now we're ready to finalize by selecting merge checked records. And once you select that and click that button, a doom and gloom scenario is going to be flash to you that no restore file is created so basically this is kind of similar to the manual Salesforce account merge process where you go through that merge wizard and when you're ready to merge Salesforce gives you that you can't go back on this this is permanent type of deal so we'll go ahead and, and click yes though because we know that these indeed are duplicate records and now ta-da so we get a deduplication complete message, in this case showing that two accounts were merged into one account and no errors, I always like to see that. And you always have a results file that's logged for you, so, and it's a text file, so if you ever wanted to go back and look at those results, Demand Tools automatically stores those results for you. And that is it. And actually, what we can do, just to confirm the actual merge took place, is go back to the web browser that showed the two records that we reviewed and a quick refresh of the record that we merged. We'll confirm that that record is, has been deleted and the actual master record has been retained. And in one fell swoop, that's how you can easily go through setting up a scenario based on any standard custom object to find the scenario that you want to load review the results, and in a pretty swift manner and very efficient, go ahead and merge duplicate records in your Salesforce and clean up duplicates that exist on any object, whether it be standard or custom. Thanks for your time, everybody, and if you have questions, feel free to reach out to us.